You know, you see like the people who have it figured out. I just made a million dollars doing this. And it's like, okay, how do you make like a hundred? In this episode, we walk through what it actually looks like to build a newsletter to nearly $100,000 a year revenue. It's like whenever I focus my energy into one part of it, and then it's like, crap, I don't have any sponsors though. <laughs> 2023 revenue is 87,000. In three years, uh -huh. 500,000. Yeah. Here yeah. we're operating in solopreneur numbers. Yep. This is team numbers. Mm -hmm. What makes someone decide the price that you're charging for sponsorships, the number of subscribers they're reaching? And the biggest way we got here, great content and paid ads. One of the big mistakes that I see creators make is they try to tackle too many things at once. And if I were to give you one problem to obsess over, it would be... After this, I feel like I have an action list of where my time should be spent. I'm really excited for that. Marissa, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So you've done something that a lot of people talk about doing in starting a local newsletter. It's this idea that entrepreneurs get to this, some level of success and they're like, I'm going to start a local newsletter. Yeah. And then it almost never works out. <laughs> It's usually much harder than people expect. Yes. And uh, you've done it and you've pulled it off and you've scaled it. So I want to dive into that today. Okay. What's something that's fundamentally different from, you know, when you started to like how things actually turned out? You thought like, oh, this would be hard, but it was actually this other thing. Yeah. Um, I thought it'd be hard to come up with story ideas. Yeah. It's not. It's the easiest thing. <laughs> I have a million story ideas. I have enough stories for like 10 years and I, it's that much harder easy. to make money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to like keep going. <laughs> that makes sense. Well, let's start just by sharing some context of where the newsletter is at. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, talk through subscribers and then we'll get into revenue after yeah, that. Yeah. Do you want me to give the spiel about like what it is? Yeah. Let's okay. do that. Okay. So it's called From Boise. It is a weekly newsletter and podcast about life in Boise. On Tuesdays, I send a long story. It's usually about like a person, a place, piece of history, or some sort of happening, something happening in town. And then on Thursdays, I send a huge list of things to do, like a huge list. It's a very big list. I have learned that there's, there's too much. Um, <laughs> there's like, there's a limit. <laughs> when the email find the clips in Gmail? Yes, or what, what yes the... no, exactly. <laughs> um, is the limit. So let's talk through some of the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So how many subscribers does it have and, mm -hmm. and uh, the social following and all that? Yeah, um, we have 22,000 newsletter subscribers. Mm -hmm. um, we have, so the podcast is new. I started the newsletter in, I sent the first one in March, March 30th, 2021. So just over three years. Yeah, just over three years. And then I started the podcast version May of 2023. So the podcast is like a year Okay. And some months old. Um, and the podcast has about 1,300 monthly listeners. Um, and then the Instagram account has about 24,500 subscribers or, or followers. followers. And yeah. um, I don't really have any strategy there either. <laughs> I post on Tuesdays and Thursdays when the newsletter goes out. And usually like whatever coffee shop I've worked at or something mm -hmm. I went to over the weekend, I just make a reel about it. But maybe let's start by setting some context of mm -hmm. I guess how it started, right? Yeah. So I think it well, was... Well, started with your idea. <laughs> yeah, started... <laughs> Let's bring me into yeah. the story. No. <laughs> I think it was December 2020. Yep. I've been thinking about this for a while, inspired by Andrew Wilkinson, who runs um, Capital Daily, mm -hmm. I believe, in Victoria, Canada. It actually kind of came together from there. And I was like, well, I can't run it. So I need to hire yeah. someone to run it. And I posted a job ad. We had never met before. Yeah. But we had a few mutual friends. Mm -hmm. in Jess Flynn is yep. who sent it to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it was one of those things that I thought I was hiring someone, you know, like the the editor in chief to run it. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was, a, and it's just th this experiment. There were zero subscribers. But then really what happened, <laughs> I mean, as it's transformed over time, I was, Decently involved in the early days mm -hmm. of figuring out the format, the growth. Um, a random funny thing is the like the first newsletter ads yeah. to promote it. Like I was, I <laughs> uh, played a lot of indoor soccer, <laughs> and uh, one day I came into soccer, and two different people were like, "Oh, I saw you! I saw you on Instagram!" <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "The ad, yeah, it's so what, funny." <laughs> what, what was that about? Um, but it's because I had made this ad walking through freak alley which mm -hmm. is one of, like one of the iconic places in boise and the goal was to have an ad where if someone knew boise they would immediately stop scrolling and realize oh i i know where that is yep without having to say it you know you don't want to be over the top of like i am in boise idaho in freak alley. you know it's like no if you're in the know you know where that is and it was just me walking through it you know through this, this very visual place with all the murals mm -hmm. and everything saying like, hey, you know, I started this newsletter. Here's what it's about. You should subscribe. 
And that's how we got our <laughs> first <laughs> first bunch of subscribers. Yeah. But then it really turned into, um, like, I mean, I'm honestly an absentee partner <laughs> in this business. <laughs> it's where great. You, you run it <laughs> so much. Let's talk about the money side of things. I okay. think people are curious about, okay, if you get to that level of subscribers, that that reach. Yeah. Um, how much money did From Boise earn top line revenue last year? Last year was um, $87,000. $87,000. Yeah. That's awesome. And I did that while I had another job too, <laughs> yeah. which was pretty crazy. <laughs> I was very tired, but it's but it's possible. Yeah. Um, and se- seventy seven thousand of that was sponsorships. Okay. The rest was reader donations, and I did some like merch mm-hmm. that I wouldn't do again. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> and then what's revenue year to date? We're recording this late July. Yeah, um, we're at about these are like rough, you know, yeah. uh, rounded out. Like we're at about thirty three thousand five hundred. So 29,000 of that is sponsors. Okay. It's like pretty much all sponsorship. And then I have not done any merch this year. Mm-hmm. The rest is reader donations. Yeah. That, and that and reader donations is people donating on a monthly basis from like anywhere from like five to ten dollars a month. Okay. And then there's a couple like people will someone gave me a three hundred and sixty five dollar tip the other day. Nice. <laughs> and um dollar or like, day. yeah, a dollar like a day. It. I loved it. Um so yeah, there'll be like those random like twenty five dollar to like a hundred dollar, mm-hmm. sometimes three hundred sixty five. <laughs> yeah. Um. But I will say that like well, I, don't know, I wouldn't say I have not been good about it, but I could probably ask for reader donations more often. Yeah. Like every time I have asked, people do it, but it feels weird to ask for. Like it. to what extent? You know, if you put it in a newsletter, does mm-hmm. that mean there's an initial hundred dollars in donations, or it comes in at yeah, like five hundred like, or eight hundred? Um, at the three year anniversary mark. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I say it's March 30th um, yeah. is I just said, you know, like this, it's, it's free. I want to keep yeah. it free. And like, the, we're a really small team. It's pretty much just me most of the time. And, um, you know, your support really makes a difference. And I think we, I got like $1,500 that day. Oh, wow. Yeah. By like a lot of different people. Yeah. That's um, awesome. They were like pretty, all pretty small donations, but like a lot of people mm-hmm. did it. Which is the whole thing. I mean, that's true for so many creators. Yeah. Where they're like, no one's buying my product. It's like, well, have you told them about it? Have you directly asked them to <laughs> yeah. buy it? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I know. And it's like the free newsletter isn't like mm-hmm. raking in money, <laughs> of <laughs> course. But if you don't ask, I mean, a lot of times people value it and they will say like, I know you're doing it for free. Here's, you know, 20 bucks or whatever. Right. And if you have 100 people do that, like it, you know, it makes becomes a meaningful. Yeah. So... You came to Craft and Commerce, mm-hmm. um, Kit's annual conference mm-hmm. uh, last year. Mm-hmm. I felt like all the help that I, you know, wasn't able to or didn't <laughs> give you, like you had had some really good breakthroughs uh-huh. from there. Talk about, I don't know, the before and after, and like what you what you yeah. learned being a part of that creator community. Yeah, it was pretty life changing, honestly. Um, I'm not just saying that because you're right here. <laughs> like it was really, I felt like it was up until then from Boise was just like this thing I was doing. Like I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I have like this little newsletter and it was just like my side hustle type thing. And it was when I really realized that it, I was like, oh, like this is a real business. Like I could like actually do this mm-hmm. as a career. And uh, not just like, it's not just like this little thing, you know? I was just popping into the like little <laughs> workshops here yeah. and there, that sort of thing. And Matt Mullen, who's this uh, amazing content creator and, and really like behind the scenes genius on so many things, email marketing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I'll pop into his workshop and see what's going on. <laughs> and he's like, you had volunteered. <laughs> he's like full email strategy with yeah. you. I Because I was that. like, I mean... These, like, I looked up all these people, and right. I'm like, I can't afford to have your coaching thing. So, like, if you're going to coach me for 15 minutes for free, like, yeah, <laughs> I will be the guinea pig, you know? Um, I also volunteered for um, Justin Moore's sponsorship thing. I was yep. like, pick me apart. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Tell me what to do. Yeah, so talking about the money side, you mentioned Justin Moore, mm-hmm. and he really encouraged you to, to do sponsorships entirely different mm-hmm. than how you are doing it before. Yeah, and I've kind of landed in the middle. I found that like what has been working is in the middle. Mm -hmm. So originally we had like, you know, these are the packages, like this is how much things, you know? Yep. Um, and he was like, don't do that. You're putting the sponsors in a box when you do that. Like, you're like, if you want to work with me, it's $500. But what if they had $10,000, you know, which I found to be true. But also sometimes people just want you to tell them a price so that they can go tell their boss and, or they're like, we have $200. Can 
can we what, what can, can we do, do something? That? Yeah, like right. it's. Um, I think that's something with a local newsletter that's like unique to that. Mm -hmm. Basically, what I've done is I kind of like have my pricing. Do you want me to just kind of like go yeah. into it? Okay, Let's go into so it. I have sponsorships, which are ads, in the newsletter and on the podcast. The newsletter it's at the top, or in the middle, and or in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, podcast I just record them and my guy puts them where they should go. Yep. <laughs> and so, um, and then lately I have also added on four existing sponsors that are the right fit, like a a real add on, like an Instagram real add on. I pretty much just focus on Instagram. Yep. For for social media, the top spot ranges between like five hundred to a thousand dollars. The middle spots like. Honestly, I've go, gone as low as like 50 for a nonprofit. Um, but usually it's like between like 250 to 500. Yeah. And then um, the podcast sponsorships are usually like 200 to 250. I will. So that's kind of just like a one off thing. Mm -hmm. um, I will package those together to do like a bulk deal. Usually it's like the fourth one would be like $250 yeah. off. Um, and then kind of like bundling both of them. Like, you know, you get four newsletter things and four podcast episodes and and a reel and that's like a thing for kind of like going back to that beginning yeah. is i was freelance writing and i had written a lot about boise i'd written a lot about like the music scene in boise mm -hmm. which was really struggling you know at the end of 2020 right um and i had kind of been posting these like long things on facebook like my own facebook page that was just like this cool band's coming like here's a little thing about them go to these shows and when i wouldn't post for a week people would be like hey you're gonna do your you gonna do your post? And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yes, um, I guess thing. so. Yeah. And so I've been kind of thinking about like starting a blog that was really focused about Boise music. Like mm -hmm. there was no place, there's just no like one source where you could just find all of the shows happening. Um, so I was kind of like thinking about that, but blogs are hard. Like mm -hmm. it's really hard to like get someone to come to your website and SEO and all that. And so I was like, well, actually, let's talk yeah. about that for a second because yeah. it's something that. It took me a long time to realize mm -hmm. early in my creator career because I started blogging mm -hmm. and you got, you know, traffic from search engines, traffic from, you know, directory, you know, Reddit, other mm -hmm. um, forums, things like that. But it was really missing the way to push content to subscribers. Yeah. So I had this post, uh, this is probably November 2011, I think, that uh, I wrote. It was titled How I Made $19,000 on the App Store <laughs> While Learning to Code. <laughs> And I love the like little two yep, part, totally. you know, <laughs> classic <laughs> blog title. <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent. And it ended up going to the very top of this news site called Hacker News, which is in the tech community. And it, in like two days, it got forty or fifty thousand views. And I thought, like, I had, was getting hundreds of visits a month, and I got this all in one in one go. And I thought, like, oh, I've made it as a, <laughs> as a blogger. But then the next month, there was. There was nothing. Yeah. And if you had hid that month, November 2011, in the Google Analytics graph, you would have never guessed that anything had happened. And that was really when I, well, a few months later, mm -hmm. like discovered newsletters. And because that's the difference of like people stick around and they want to yeah. follow. And you get to build on something that compounds instead of like mm -hmm. this went viral and then we're back to like 10% more than nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I think it's easier for the reader too. Like mm -hmm. you're just, you just show up in there. You're just magically there every week in right. their inbox. Whereas like on a blog, you know, you kind of have to, you have to like go find them or seek it out or. That's an interesting thing. If you're going from the blog into the newsletter, had you paid much attention to newsletters? No, before? Okay. I never even thought about it. But <laughs> then um, my old boss, Jess Flynn, sent me your your um twitter yeah. post or x post whatever yeah and um she was like this is the perfect thing for you <laughs> and i was like oh my god a newsletter is such a good idea it's totally what it, like that's that's what i want to do and i basically wrote you a cover letter that was like hello you need to hire me <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is what i'm supposed to be doing um let's assume that we have a bunch of people listening who you know are living in you know i don't know boulder san antonio mm -hmm. like all of these cities that have like a similar amount of love for them that Boise has. Mm -hmm. um, and there could be that market. A, a lot of other local newsletters are taking a very different approach. Mm -hmm. Either they're doing something like Capital Daily was, and they're they're really doing news reporting mm -hmm. in, in the form of a newsletter, or they're going the other route and they're just saying, here's what's up. Yeah. You know, talk about 
like choosing the format for from Boise mm-hmm. and why you think that matters so much? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, first of all, it's just, it comes natural to me. So mm-hmm. I'm able to do it consistently. You know, I'm a long form writer. Like I want to write long stories. I'm not really interested in like talking about the news all the time. Yeah. Because um, that was a very deliberate decision yeah. you made. Um, I don't, we like, we don't ever really talk about the news. And that keeps us out of politics. It yeah. keeps us out of so many things. Also, like, you can find it other places. Yeah. You don't need it from me, too. You know? <laughs> I, I kind of like to think of From Boise as, like, it's just the fun stuff. Like, when you need a break <laughs> from all the other stuff, you just read From Boise. And that, and yeah. people tell me that, too. And then I like to just find, like, I do some serious sleuthing to find, like, some random stuff. Um, like, what's an example of something that you included <laughs> that was very, very random or um, someone wouldn't have picked up from the, the newspaper or you know, the radio station. Like cornhole tournaments, dog <laughs> parades, like dog meetups, like yeah. very specific breed dog meetups, <laughs> things like that, like that are just. Let's talk a little bit about the team mm-hmm. side of things, because while this is a small business, mm-hmm. it's a big undertaking and now reaching, you know, 20,000 plus readers on a, on a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. Like how has the team evolved over time? Like working with contractors, you know, as you mm-hmm. brought people in, what roles? Yeah. And all that. So at the beginning, I just did like, literally everything mm-hmm. um because well, i didn't give you enough budget to do <laughs> more yeah, than that i was yeah. like i don't know we can, I was also, can we start this with a few thousand dollars <laughs> yeah. a month <laughs> well i was also just like i don't know i didn't really understand what need, needed to be done yeah. you know um it was kind of just like getting the rhythm of writing that much mm-hmm. on a regular basis um and then the first person i hired was a social media person mm-hmm. um which was good and then that has then I was like, you know, I'm it's like taking a lot. Like I'm I was like waking up at like four AM to finish newsletters and then send them. That were supposed to go <laughs> which out that day. I know yeah. is like other newsletter I, I operators think, can relate. Oh yes. But it's not fun. And it gets old really quickly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then I started working with some other writers. So and which I still do. So I have um like three pretty regular writers. Um, and this year, actually, I've used them more than ever. So I'm pretty much writing like one story a month. Mm-hmm. And then they each write one. And so like there's my that month of stories. Out. It's really nice. Yeah. Um, and then on the podcast, like I just read those stories. So I say who wrote it, but like I mm-hmm. read it. Yeah. And the team is so interesting because it's so much content that has to be produced. Mm-hmm. You know, minimum you're looking at a long form article every Tuesday, you know, a, a long series of short things every Thursday yeah. and then the social media content. And that's just to, to keep up, mm-hmm. you know, now it's like, okay, well, what are you creating to grow? Yeah. You've done different guides over time and, and all of that. Mm-hmm. It's like whenever I focus my energy into one part of it, like I'm like, okay, I'm two months ahead in stories. And then it's like, crap, I don't have any sponsors though. <laughs> right. Or like, you know, what are we doing for the social media part of it though? Or like now I don't have anything running for, to like get more subscribers. And, um, there's never been a time where all it's like all systems are going and yeah. I'm like, yes, this okay. is good. Like it always seems like I'm like, Oh my God. Okay. Now I need to like focus over here. Yeah. Jumping between mm-hmm. the different things. That yeah. makes sense. So what have you noticed that's different in like how you were selling like before what you were doing was didn't work very well for the large brands, mm-hmm. like, um, you know, the local ski resort, mm-hmm. right. Or, uh, the insurance company or like these, these giant brands, mm-hmm. how has it worked since you've made tweaks and, and sort of found that middle ground? Mm-hmm. I think that it, like it's just allowed me to work with more businesses, which yeah. honestly has kind of been an experiment. Like there's some that I've worked with that I'm like, this is not like, in hindsight, I should have just said, like, this is not the best fit. I think it's just, like, being flexible with that, like, price point and really hearing, like, what people's goals are is has been, like, more impactful. So really, before you were leading with, this is what we can offer. Mm-hmm. And now you lead with, what are your goals and what you're trying to accomplish? Yeah. And then you're not hiding what you can offer, mm-hmm. but you're finding the right time to bring that into the conversation. Yeah. But going to a local newsletter, like the ability to actually drive real humans Mm -hmm. to get on their bicycles or in their cars Mm -hmm. and to show up to an actual event, I think is just the coolest thing. Yeah. Because I spent all my time in the digital world. Mm -hmm. And we tend to think about things in terms of uh, subscriber counts. And then we might look at what are the email addresses behind it, but it's just like, it's so disconnected. Mm -hmm. 
And so to, to run things and say like, oh yeah, I got 50 people to show up <laughs> physically to the space. Yeah. I, I think it's just, it's so cool. crazy. I will say something about that, that I would suggest to people. That's something that I did that I didn't realize was a good thing in hindsight was make the newsletter from me. It comes from Marissa at from yes. Boise. Yeah. And you don't, I, you're not hiding behind a brand. No. Yeah. Like, but I, it was, that was the thing. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, I don't, you know this. I was like, I don't want anyone to know who I am. <laughs> and I don't know why. I just yeah, like. Three years later, how do you feel about that? I still don't really want. <laughs> like, I just, I think that what it is, is like, it's not about me. I don't mm -hmm. want to, I'm, I don't see myself as an influencer, even though it totally has become Influence. this thing. Right. But I decided to just do it because I was like, whatever people can know. like, it's just a first name. Like, right. I don't have to, I don't have to like do anything with that. But what's funny about that is people, I mean, people think they know me and in a way they do right. like, because it is just like, I'm very myself. I think there's something in the, the type of fame, which is an interesting conversation for creators mm -hmm. because on one hand we're, we're trying to become much better known. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I'm trying to build an audience and that requires people knowing you. And then there's also this fear of like, oh, what if this tips over at a certain point and you can't reel it back? Yeah. You know, the the child actor who becomes super famous and their life is entirely different mm -hmm. or that sort of thing. One thing that I've noticed is the difference between like writers and YouTubers mm -hmm. where I've watched a lot of writers be able to attend a conference and People, they've sold tens of millions of copies of their books mm -hmm. and people don't actually know what they look like. Uh, and then I've seen YouTubers like at Craft and Commerce. Yeah. You know, Casey Neistat be mobbed before he even, like he, it's the Boise airport. Yeah. And like <laughs> he's trying to get to his car and people are like, Casey, you know. Yeah. And so there's something really interesting in in the, the mediums that you have chosen allow you to reach and influence really a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And someone has to really know you to like stop you at the local restaurant and be like, I love the newsletter Yeah, because your face is not on the newsletter. No. And is your, I've like put, I have put like picture in there before, yeah. but it's not like people don't, I mean, Are there you wouldn't photos on the about page. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't even have an about page. <laughs> there used to be an about page yeah. at one point. Um, I should have one up, but no, at some point. I mean, there's not, I mean, and like I've, you know, there's, times where I've like made an appearance on the Instagram page or something, but I've right. never done the video where it's like, you know, me going into this place. Like it's never. Yeah. It's not the traditional influencer stuff. No. And I think there's two sides of that that are interesting to me. One is the, like your relationship with the audience, mm -hmm. you know, of how much you want to be front and center, stopped in the street with your kids, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But then the other is how it, I feel like it kind of shapes the relationship with the audience in an interesting way. It makes it more easy for like me as a community member to feel a part of it mm -hmm. instead of like, oh, this is the Marissa show. Yeah. It's like, oh no, this is what we collectively do as citizens of Boise. And Marissa just happens to be the person who like is the conduit yeah. for it. Yeah, for sure. Which is, I didn't really realize that that's what I was going for. I mm -hmm. was more so being like, I don't want to be, I don't want anyone to know. <laughs> Just like being like, it started out of fear and ended in a great place. Yeah, basically, basically, yeah. Was there anything else going back to craft and commerce? Mm -hmm. It felt like it was such an important time for you as you learned. I think I think what I'm noticing is not just the tactics, but also it felt like you came out of it with this, like I don't know, it's not quite renewed purpose, understanding, confidence, maybe like mm -hmm. just being around creators who were not the biggest names, mm -hmm. but it was like, I don't know. Is it like seeing the entire middle class of the creator economy? Yeah. It like really validated it, that it was like something real, you know, mm -hmm. because, um, you know, you see like the people who have, who have it figured out. Right. Yeah. Um, I just made a million dollars doing yeah. this or whatever. And and it's like, okay. <laughs> or someone who said like, like a hundred. <laughs> right. <laughs> I tried for so long to make this a full-time living and I couldn't like, we get the two extremes. Yes. You know, or like, I feel like the news wants to run stories of being like, you know, failed influencers can no longer pay rent, you yeah. know, or something. Yes, and, and it's just totally. Like, like you get like, you get fed the like two opposite ends mm -hmm. of the spectrum all the time. I think like the willingness to share is also really cool with, yeah. with creators. Like people are like, oh yeah, this is how I did it. Um, yeah. Everyone's, everyone's an open book. Yeah. It's really cool. 
Let's talk, go back to the money side a little bit mm -hmm. because there's, there's a lot of things that you've tried that either felt like the next new thing, or maybe mm -hmm. this will be the, the breakthrough and then they've worked moderately well, or you've scaled it mm -hmm. back. Talk through like the membership or the swag or some mm -hmm. of the other things. Yeah. So I did a, I tried a kind of like membership paid community. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what you'd call it, but it's called BFFs. And it was a group. I had a lot of people asking me like, how do you meet people? How do yeah. I meet people? And I was like, well, I should just get people together. There's all these people that want to meet people. Um, and it was really great at first. Like I had like a hundred people sign up. Um, I offered it at $9 a month or $99 a year. And we did meetups. Like we played Boise trivia one night that was and really fun. Yeah, that was great. That was the, so that was the first one. And it felt like that was like it, it peaked there. Yeah. And then it's kind of like, mm. so at the beginning of the year, I was just like, you know what, we're not going to do meetups anymore. I don't really know what this group's going to become. And I had about 16 people cancel and everyone else was like, it's, I just want to support you. Yeah. So I still have people paying mm -hmm. every month that are like technically BFF. Did you think about like other other ways, other things to offer in that membership? Because I think a lot of people go to like, oh, there's going to be a members only section of the newsletter mm -hmm. or Tuesdays are free, Thursdays are paid. Mm -hmm. And we've talked a lot about not wanting to limit access yeah. to the content because yeah. that's such a key thing. Yeah, I thought about that. And I did have actually have a secret section mm -hmm. in the newsletter, BFF only section. But I couldn't like it got to the point where I was like, what do I put in here? Right. Like it's. Why would I only tell them something and not everyone else? Like, it just didn't seem, I don't know. It just didn't really, it felt like, again, like one more thing for me to try yeah. to like figure out and do. And um, that wasn't really worth it. In like, I hate to make it like a monetary thing, but it but was it is, like, right? yeah. This is, we're, run we're running a business. Yeah. And so it was like the time I'm spending on this is not like computing. I think that the other side that, we would assume would work really well as the merch sales. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I did merch. I've done uh, two different rounds of merch mm -hmm. and it just is so much more complicated than you think it's going to be. Like I was like, I'm going to make a shirt and sell it. And it's like, you got to figure out like a place to sell it. Where are you going to print it, mm -hmm. order it, get someone to design it. I think I sold 80 shirts okay. and was like, okay, cool. It's It, it, it was just like a lot of time. Yeah. Um. Sense. And then, you know, offering shipping because I have readers that don't live here. Okay. Let's talk about that because yeah. that was actually surprising to me. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of readers that don't live <laughs> a here. A substantial number. Yeah. What are like the top three or four reasons that someone reads regularly Yeah. and they don't live here? Um, They used to live here mm -hmm. and they used to like want to keep, they can't believe how much it's growing and, or they like know the history stories yeah. and they, yeah, but they, they used to live here. They have family that lives here, family mm -hmm. or friends, and they want to come visit or they want to move here. Yeah. Like I had someone sign up yesterday. She was like, I'm just researching Boise and I really want to move there. So I like reading everything you've ever written right now and I want to move there. <laughs> yeah. And that's what it surprised me. I think it was a substantial portion, something like 35, yeah. 40% of readers don't actually currently reside yeah. in, in the greater Boise area. But yeah, it's a lot of people, like a lot of people. So then really, as we talk revenue going forward, and actually I want to jump up on the whiteboard in, mm -hmm. in just a second and dive into like, let's talk about, you know, the future of from mm -hmm. Boise over the next five years or three years, whatever mm -hmm. time period we want to pick. But it, it sounds like sponsorships are the thing that are working the best. And as you, you look at it, you know, that's going to continue to be 80, 90% of the revenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it still takes a lot of time. So I would like to figure out how that could just like be a little, I don't know, easy. I want to say like easier, but like, yeah, a better system for it. Yeah. A better system for it. And, um, so that maybe I could spend time doing like these bigger brand mm -hmm. deals. And I would also like to sell something directly to my audience mm -hmm. that's valuable to them. And I have an idea for it. Like, I think that I know, but I, I do think that maybe I should like talk to some of my audience to like run the idea by them right. once it's a little more flushed out. But I think that I could come up with a product that people want to buy too. Yeah. I a like digital it. product that I don't have to ship. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, jump up and grab some markers and, and plan this out of okay. what the next, I don't know, we'll pick the time frame, three years looks like? Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. So something that you said earlier is what would make this fun 
It is fun. <laughs> you're having, like, we're having fun in this yeah, competition. It's fun. You're obviously having fun building the business. Yeah. But what would make it way more fun is making substantially more money. Yeah. And not just for your take home, like that's really important. Yeah. But also to be able to invest in the team and all of those things. Mm -hmm. So well, tell me again, what was the number of revenue in 2023? 2023 revenue was 87,000. What sounds interesting, you know, if we're looking three years from now, let's mm -hmm. say 2026, what mm -hmm. would be like, I can't believe that I'm running this business and it's grown to this level. Yeah. Well, I, I was going to say I want to hit six figures, but I was so close. Yeah, that's very close. I would love to be making like 500,000 would be, I would be like. 500,000? Yeah. I mean, that's a legit business. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. That's like, I could, I'd have a team. Yeah. I wouldn't do it all. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay. So in three years, uh -huh. uh, 500,000. Yeah. We'll say 2027. 2027, because we're like halfway through. Yeah. 2024, and I feel like I'm a little behind. You're also building systems so yes. that you can take a parental leave and yeah. all of this. I've been doing. I actually been doing a lot of systems work yeah. this year. That's awesome. It's it's good. So as we go through some numbers here, mm -hmm. we've got 22,000 subscribers mm -hmm. now, and so we're making. Let's go easy numbers. Let's say four dollars per subscriber per mm -hmm. year. That's like. Directionally correct. So if we're looking to hit 500,000, mm -hmm. this is sort of the equation that we're playing with, okay. right? We need to either, you know, 6x the number of subscribers, or we need to 6x our revenue per subscriber. Mm -hmm. uh, in reality, it's going to be a combination of both. Okay. So when you think about this, so like subscriber growth versus, uh, I'm going to use the the industry term of ARPU, which is average revenue per user. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll just say uh, list growth. Uh, so those ideas will go here, and then uh, our increasing average revenue per user ideas will go there. Oh, let's brainstorm list growth right now. Mm -hmm. We've actually stayed at about 22,000 subscribers for mm -hmm. a while. Because it's really been about systems mm -hmm. and that focus. Talk I haven't about that really for a been. Uh, I haven't really done much mm -hmm. to grow the list, honestly. Yeah. Um, until recently, I recently I started running a new ad. I kind of like wasn't really running ads, or I would yep. run one, and um, but it's <laughs> it's like a classic thing of like just keep it simple. Right. Um. So the ad I'm running now is super simple. Yep. Um. And it's great. <laughs> It's like working a lot. Um, I'm also on the creator network. That definitely brings in subscribers. Um, you know, the people I'm partnered with on there are like other local, like people locally who have newsletters, not necessarily local newsletters. Yep. Um, so that I'm just about to, I just kind of finished up our referral program. Mm -hmm. So that should help because honestly, we have a lot of word of mouth, but like yeah. making it easy for people to do word of mouth. You know, there's a lot of businesses who like I want to work with or want to work with us that maybe don't have the budget to advertise, but would maybe give something to do like a giveaway. Mm -hmm. And I would, I want to experiment a little bit with like giveaways in yeah. the, like, you know, subscriber, get people to subscribe giveaways in the newsletter. So something a broad idea that fits within these is how do we get good at translating going from social media followers mm -hmm. to newsletter subscribers? Mm -hmm. Because social media has a discovery algorithm. Yeah. Email does not. Yeah. And that's like both email's greatest gift and fatal flaw mm -hmm. <laughs> simultaneously. Yeah. I think I should be using some sort of like um, write message or whatever it is to like, you know, comment, subscribe, and we'll send you today's newsletter or something like right. that. I yeah. think I should be doing that. Okay. Yeah. So that's, um, uh, yeah, we'll just say comment to subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. So getting that dialed in. Mm hmm one thing, so most of these subscribers, at least, we should look at the cohort data on this. Most of the initial growth from subscribers came from paid ads, where mm -hmm. we actually invested quite For a sure. bit in paid ads. Mm -hmm. And then we had this pivot with the, it, like 2021, 2022, where it was like, okay, now let's run it profitably. Mm -hmm. um, and then we really scaled back the ads. Mm -hmm. 
I also wanted to see, like, what happens if I do nothing? Mm-hmm. Like, what does the growth look like then? Yeah. Um, What's the natural momentum yeah. of this? Yeah. What did you find? Um, it definitely, like, you know. Ebbs and flows. Yeah. Um, but I always kind of, like, stayed on top. But it was really small. Like, it would be, like, you know, net, like, four subscribers a month. Right. Um, but it was interesting to see, like, what happens if I do nothing? Yeah. Like, what's the baseline? Um, but definitely the pay- paid ads has been, like... The biggest. Yeah. So then why don't you write down on, if we're increasing average revenue per user, mm-hmm. or the total revenue, what are some of the things that you can think about that would do that? Can Can you, like, explain this a little bit more? Like, is yeah. this, like, charging your sponsors more when you have more subscribers? Like, what, is the, what does that mean? Yeah, so this is really... In a subscription business, Mm -hmm. we'd be thinking about who's paying $10 a month versus who's paying $20 a month. How do we get more of the $10 people to become $20? Mm. It's more of that kind of thing. Here we're using it as an approximation for this math of basically we've got – this is the equation of we can find ways to make more money off of each person. Let's say – uh, one you can put on on the list is charging sponsors more or sponsors who pay more. Why don't you write that one down? Okay. You know, the same size list might result in even more, um, but it's going to re- result in more revenue, mm-hmm. right? I think direct selling something directly to the audience, like yep. what's a, a yep. so would you write like product? Uh, yeah, I would just say um, yeah, selling products. Also, from what you were talking about earlier, there's something to the asking for donations that, yeah. you know, like an actual mm-hmm. process for that, not just, hey, we do it once a year. Yeah. Um, you could just say, like, increase donations. Because mm-hmm. that has worked for other newsletters. Yeah. Like, really well. Local newsletters. One thing, yeah, let's, let's continue. If there are any other ideas on increasing mm-hmm. average revenue per subscriber? I don't know if this would go there, but I've thought about, like, affiliate things. Mm -hmm. I mean, my Thursday newsletter has, like, over 100 links in it, probably. Yeah. Like, and I don't make money from any of them. Is that... Yeah, so on one hand, it's a great opportunity to make more money. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, does that change the feeling of it? I know. I think about that all the time. (laughs) I think about it all the time. It's also, I've been kind of, like, hesitant to have non-local... Sponsors. Right. Even though, like, Justin kind of, like, pushed back on that with me and was, he was, like, just be, like. National right, businesses want to yeah. reach customers everywhere. Well, and he was, like, are you, do you only exclusively use <laughs> Boise products? And I was, like, no. <laughs> like, he's, like, you know, people in Boise, like, use things that aren't from right. Boise. Not to so that- hopefully the plant brand <laughs> You know, we said sponsors should pay more, but there, there's a, a another one in there that you're getting at, which mm-hmm. is basically like, is it national sponsors? Is that the yeah? And I think kind of like brand deals versus just like an ad. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a difference between those two yeah. things. Yeah. Why don't you say national brand deals? Now, something that I'm thinking about here, and we'll, we'll continue to write down things in both categories. I'm thinking about the 90-10 split that you have right now. Mm-hmm. There is going to be a tendency that we have of like, how do we get to these, how do we get sponsorships to 40%, direct product sales to 40%, we'll use actual numbers, say 200,000 in sponsorships, Mm -hmm. 200,000 in direct product sales, 50 in donations and 50 in other. Mm -hmm. My gut feeling, I don't know what you think, my gut feeling is that actually the 90-10 might be the right split. Maybe it goes to 80-20. But that we're actually not going to have a, like a whole suite of things mm-hmm. that get us there. It's probably going to be pretty dominated by sponsorships. Mm-hmm. I think so, for sure. Especially because, I mean, Boise is like small. It's still a small mm-hmm. city. And there's only so many places to advertise. Right. And like the way that I'm doing it is di- like different. It's a different offer to businesses. Yeah. It's fully attributable. What is that word? Attributable. Mm-hmm. Attributable? Attributable. attributable. <laughs> That's the way to pronounce it. <laughs> it's fully attributable. You know, you can see how many people click this. Yeah. Uh, which is both a blessing and a curse, yeah. right? Because on one hand, someone's like, well, did I get the exact clicks to check through to the sales? Right. And it's like, 
you spend money as a brand all the time on things where you're like, ah, oh, it just goes into good vibes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. totally. But that is really hard. <laughs> but this one yeah. in particular, you want to measure totally a direct revenue. Yeah. But there's also just like, you know, with like events, it's like you can, be, you can take out a billboard, radio, right. newspaper. Oh, as I'm looking at the the list on increasing revenue per subscriber, mm-hmm. there's some of these things that you should do of like figure out, okay, this is our system for donations. Here are the four times a year, you know, that we ask for it. Here's how we always do it. You know, it's in this dedicated, it's email three of the welcome sequence that you get, you know, or I'm trying to think if we could do this in, uh, in kit, but you know, if you could do a like anniversary email of when you joined Mm. as a subscriber, right? So there's probably some systems things that we could do to improve that. Yeah. But we should put the five hours into doing that, automate it, and not touch it again. Totally. Because we're we're gonna get mm-hmm. maybe we double the donations per subscriber, but that you know takes us from four dollars to four twenty five. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Like it's not gonna be a lot. Uh huh. Selling products, I think, could be could be big, but I don't think it'll I don't think it'll get beyond a hundred k. I mean, that'd be amazing. That would be itself. amazing. Even getting to 100K. Yeah. Because I think that the product idea I have mm-hmm. can feed the other content things, which frees up my time. And, right. Yeah. Which is like, and it would be, be just amazing to make 100K off of that. Yeah. Yeah, like that. But I do think that 90-10, let's say we get to an 80-20 split. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that sponsors... Mm-hmm. Sponsors the then, 80 products is the 20. Yeah. I'm not really sure why I'm writing regular case here and all caps here, but we're rolling this with it. This is what we're doing. It's <laughs> <That's> cool. <laughs> uh, so long as we keep the trend going. Okay, so we're, I don't, th- neither of us think we're going to have like an even split everywhere. Mm-hmm. So sponsors is going to be the big focus. One thing that I'm wondering is what makes someone decide that the price that, that you're charging for sponsorships is the right amount to pay? Mm-hmm. Like how big of a factor of, is like the suite of touch points they're getting versus the number of subscribers they're reaching? Mm-hmm. I think it's both of those, but it also depends on the business. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some that are very like, I only want, I, I'm not interested in the podcast. Like I just want to be, they want to like see it and yeah. have it um, be very like clickable, um, yeah. you know, something like that. The Those are also usually ones that want to add on like an Instagram reel. Right. They're like, it's like a visual mentality. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm just thinking on this. There's some, I don't know which column it goes in, but it's growing other channels. Mm-hmm. So maybe let's put it let's put it here mm-hmm. of you know growing podcast and social. So if we grow both a podcast and social, then we're getting more touch points with every subscriber and that's more that we can sell to each sponsor. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking about that balance of how much we focus on growing the total subscriber base versus you know getting each subscriber on every touch point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then also you know how you think about how easy it is to sell sponsors, mm-hmm. right? That's another thing. So there, there's a lot of things that we can focus on here. Mm-hmm. But let's let's focus on the balance, right? 22,000 subscribers. Uh, Instagram, you said, it was about... It's 24,500. But, like, I want more newsletter subscribers than anything else. So that's where we should put some time into, yes. like, the, the giveaways and the comment and subscribe. Yeah. Because we actually don't know, and there's not a good way to, to know what percentage of social followers actually read the newsletter. Yeah. And it, I think that, like, I don't ever really do social content that is, like, hey, this is what <laughs> Boise actually is, you know? Right. I think that pe- there's, I would say oh, there's a large portion of this social following that's, like, it's just an Instagram page, mm-hmm. even though it says it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so make that make that a lot more clear. Yeah. And then what I'm thinking about is the overlap between... And I'm going to make this up because we don't know the numbers. Mm-hmm. But let's say that the the newsletter is you know twenty two thousand. Mm-hmm. The the podcast or sorry the the social is about the same size. Mm-hmm. We don't know what this overlap is. Mm-hmm. And then here we've got 
you know, the, say the podcast yeah. overlapping a little bit there. Yeah. Right. And so there's something to be said for making sure that like on the newsletter, well, let's go to social, right. That we're getting these people there and these people yeah, here. For sure. And we can get good at that. Yeah. And so, so that's giveaway. That's, that's here. Cause I think mm-hmm. primarily two things I would implement. One is a casual mention. Did you know we have an Instagram as well? Mm-hmm. And promote, maybe there's a, the best thing from Instagram, mm-hmm. but you should work that in more subtly. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you feature your reel yeah. each week. I've done that. Like, hey, you're, like this coffee shop is amazing. I just went there and I'll just link to the reel. Okay. But I don't know if that actually makes people follow. Right. Because honest and... Try and see. Because yeah. you, you can test this unscientifically. Yeah. Where you can you can see, hey, we had 24,000 on Instagram. And then I put in a direct, hey, we have an Instagram. Mm-hmm. You, you should go subscribe. Did you get 50 new followers or did you get 200? Mm-hmm. And so, because that's worth it. Because totally. then you just get that extra touch point. Mm-hmm. Right? The number of times that, you know, if, if the inbox is... Both the inbox and Instagram are busy. Mm-hmm. And so you might catch me in one, hook me with a, like an Instagram about the story, and then I go find it in my inbox. Yeah. Uh, or vice totally. versa. So having both. Uh-huh. And then really getting good at the social to newsletter conversion. Yeah. I, think I don't really, I mean, like, I think that that's a huge one because right. I, like, right now I'm like, you know, read it in the newsletter. Like, here's. I make a reel about the story and it's like, read it in the newsletter, but Mm -hmm. it's not easy for people to do that. Like the easiest way to do that is comment, like read, and I'll send you the newsletter. Yeah. Yeah. Using many chat or one of these other tools for it. Okay. We've got some good, good action items there. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about sponsors and then let's go into products. I think you have a lot of energy towards Mm -hmm. uh, both of those things because I just want like, I was just like the income, the revenue needs to be like much more consistent. It's very like all over the place. (laughs) Yeah. So Tim Ferriss has this question of what would it look like if it were easy? Mm -hmm. And so maybe let's just dive into that. If we think about sponsorships. Yeah. uh, What would it look like if that was easy? If that was easy. Um, They're inbound. Like right now I'm doing a lot of cold outbound outreach. I mean, not even necessarily cold, but it would be inbound. Um, And there would be very, there's very clear spaces that are just booked out. Like, yeah, clear, yeah. That it's like there's two spaces in the newsletter, there's two spaces in the podcast, and they're booked out. And maybe like formatting thing for them. You know, like it's four sentences, and it would be easy. That would be easy from a copywriting perspective. Yeah, so they provide copy. I'm just going to add that in the same. There's one that I think is missing from this. Mm-hmm. What if you didn't do it? <laughs> and not what if you didn't collectively do sponsorships. Yeah. But what if you yeah. didn't do sponsorships? Would that... That would make it a lot easier. <laughs> that would make it a lot easier. <laughs> right, and so here yeah. we're operating in solopreneur numbers. Yep. Right? This is, you can earn a full-time living off of that, all of that. This is team numbers, Mm -hmm. right? And so hiring someone who sponsorships is is their thing. Yes. Now, this is hard to do. You've tried to do aspects of it Mm -hmm. before. Like what's worked and what hasn't worked in bringing in people to help with sponsorships? Yeah. It would be amazing to have a person who actually does sales. I am not a salesperson. I think as we're looking at the level of scale that we're trying to reach, you have to get to this point. Yeah. And if I were to give you one problem to obsess over Mm -hmm. after this, it would be to learn from who has effectively built a sales team, how it it could be a single person, Mm -hmm. right? But, and how have they owned that? Because I think that that's going to be like ultimately give you the revenue and still keep you the the headspace to be able to focus Mm -hmm. on the other aspects of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So question about that. Because I would imagine somebody else watching this feels the same way. Mm-hmm. If you don't feel like you have enough money yeah. to hire a sales team, how do, like how do you get yeah, how do you so, sell enough sponsorships to hire a sales team to sell enough sponsorships? <laughs> yeah. So if someone's really early, let's say that we're at five thousand subscribers, uh-huh. and you're like, I'm going to bring in a sales team. 
you don't have enough inventory to sell uh, for it to be worth someone's time. Mm -hmm. Because that's where it's like, someone could sell out the entire newsletter and that's just, they can only sell it at a couple hundred bucks per issue. There's not enough money for any of this to work. Mm -hmm. We're at a really interesting point with the number of subscribers here mm -hmm. where there is enough to sell, especially as we get into this additional inventory, mm -hmm. right? Growing podcasts and social. We've got enough to sell to keep someone busy. Mm -hmm. And so the way that you do it is you have a sales team that operates on base plus commission. Mm -hmm. Now you can do it in some cases, you can do commission only. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes to get the commitment from someone, you can say, hey, I'm going to offer you this base salary. Yeah. Especially if it's like, hey, help, help me get the sales material over the top, like over the fi finish line. Um, and so you do some very heavy commission sales, yeah. which is going to cut into your margin a lot. Yeah, but it's going to it's book it out and make it easy yeah. for me. <laughs> and so that's where you're going to look at the the base plus commission. Okay. And so maybe it's something like, hey, I will pay you um, $1,000 a month plus... 40% of whatever you sell. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't I don't know what the numbers are. We should ask around in the industry and find mm -hmm. out. Um, but that's the way that uh, that I would structure it. Okay. And then you're going to have to spend your time making sure they're set up for success and then really thinking about, okay, how do we grow the inventory of things that they can sell? Mm -hmm. Right? How do we grow, make it so instead of selling 500, uh, say $500 sponsorships, we're selling $2,000 sponsorships per yeah. newsletter. Okay, so if we're driving this number, mm -hmm. well, first let's think about audience size. Is it realistic to 5X this number, to get to 100, 110,000 subscribers on the newsletter? Do we even have the total addressable market? I think so, especially by 2027. Yeah, we have the, the population growth that I know. Will either of us be able, for, able to afford to live here in Boise? It'll be a different question. <laughs> this is actually just friends. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But I do think that that, I mean, that would be crazy. Like, yeah. really, what's the population of Boise itself is like 300,000 or yeah. something. But, but the treasure like, route is 700 yeah, something. Yeah, which I, like, like we talked about, I have readers outside of Boise, but also right. like, like outside of Idaho, but also just in Nampa, Payette, Sun yeah. Valley. Like I do think that's possible. So getting to, I, I guess I six X it, but that's yeah. relative to, um, to those numbers. Mm -hmm. um, so we think we can get there, mm -hmm. especially if we keep the same ratio of say sixty percent local, forty percent. Um, then in that case, you know, we're talking basically if there's a million people in. The valley and the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. um, I think we get to those numbers. Yeah, I think so too. I think that paid ads paid are going to be really work. I also think that there's something. This is um, something that I started thinking about after listening to um, Bonnie's podcast mm -hmm. and Amy Porterfield's podcast. Yeah, so Bonnie Christine quizzes. and Amy Porterfield. They do quizzes. quizzes. Yeah, and like. I think that that would work local. Like, if you make it local. So if you're going to, like, awareness, conversion. Yeah. Um, you know, giveaways. Giveaways can be awareness, but they're, mm -hmm. you know, all three of these tend to be conversion points, whereas mm -hmm. these uh, are more awareness points. Mm -hmm. um, that's, good. That's, that's good. So I think, I think it's time for From Boise as a business. Mm-hmm to really focus on subscriber growth. Mm -hmm. Like we sort of plateaued for a while. Mm -hmm. And I think the goal should be, how do we double the readers are from Boise in the next 12 months? Mm -hmm. How do we get to 44,000 mm -hmm. free subscribers? Mm -hmm. And the way, the biggest way we got here, great content and paid ads. Mm -hmm. Great content is now the table stakes. Mm -hmm. And so paid ads is where we're going. Mm -hmm. And so it's really, well, what are the ads that we're running right now? It's I just have one ad that's it's on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. It's um, like a video of the balloons over Boise. Yep. The hot air balloons in September. People will know what it like. It's recognizable, and it just says the newsletter that sends a huge list of things to do every Thursday. 
Okay. And then it has like the sign up. That's all it says. Do you know what it, what it costs per subscriber right now? I don't. I just started running it at the beginning of the month. Okay. So that's the thing of building the system for producing new ads, mm-hmm. uh, all of that. It's going to be, you know, like uh, when I was more involved, we were spending time, like we had the agency running the mm-hmm. ads and they got good results, but the... Um, the creative was never very good. Yeah. Like it didn't feel authentic It to didn't us. feel local. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if we're thinking about the the ad side, like that's the system that we're really going to need to improve. Mm-hmm. And so it's probably a few, well, if we break it out into awareness and conversion, mm-hmm. right? If we imagine a lot of this is going to be social content. And so these are our reels. Mm-hmm. We're going to be testing a bunch of different reels here. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to have different, uh, offers down here, right, that we might be sending content to. This is the gift guide. This is mm. the one's going to be the straight subscription, yeah. right? Our offer is like, we send good stuff, mm-hmm. you know. One might be a roundup of our 10 best stories. Mm-hmm. And then, so you need a process for probably having three to four of these and then 10 to 20 of these, mm-hmm. right? Right. So like three to four kind of lead magnets. Yeah, lead magnets that are all to like the end of that funnel is to subscribe. Yeah. And ten to twenty like reels that promote them. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going awareness conversion. Mm-hmm. The- and would you add in like I'm thinking about with this like I've been listening to a lot of Amy Porterfield's mm-hmm. podcast and she She's talks great. about her own stuff constantly. Like constantly, every episode she's talking about her own stuff. Mm-hmm. I never talk about my own stuff <laughs> ever. <Yeah. laughs> like, um, besides the fact that I'm like reading the newsletter, but that's it. So, would you add that into it too? Like, am I talking about these lead magnets also on the podcast? I think so. Okay, I would I would talk about it everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I would have a series of call to actions that you rotate through in the newsletter mm-hmm. of. You know, if we're talking about a referral program or even simpler than that, just word of mouth. Yeah. Hey, could you do me a huge favor this week? Send this newsletter to two people who you think would enjoy it. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that, like, those little things ma- can make a big difference. Mm-hmm. But if we're talking about, you know, this, like, how do we double it in the next year, mm-hmm. um, you know, 5x in three and a half years, mm-hmm. then it's really, like, we have to get so good at paid ads. Yeah. I think it's paid ads and this, yeah. like taking this. Because you can, uh, if you're running reels mm-hmm. that say comment to subscribe, yeah, then that can be, that can work really, really well. Yeah. And even like, because like I have some reels that are like a couple months old and they're still getting engagement. Like mm-hmm. they're at, you know, the reach is like 50,000 accounts now. And I would try on these reels, mm-hmm. like if you have one that works, like the hook worked it yeah. and all of that. Try making a different version of it that has a different call to action. Yeah. Right? So maybe there's one, go back to the top five that you did in the past that did really well. Mm-hmm. Try to reverse engineer what worked and then put in, you know, before it was like, you might have said to go to frontboise.com for whatever. Mm-hmm. And here you're like, comment this and I will send you. Yeah. I have an, I like can already see this. One <laughs> of the most, seriously, one of the most popular reels is it was a story that I did about how downtown Boise was almost a mall. And they almost built a mall, like oh, where all of 8th Street is. Can you imagine? Like, <laughs> so bad. Um, yeah. And um, people are also pissed about the fact that that didn't happen, which is hilarious now. Um, but I was just like, read the story, mm-hmm. right? And it, the reel is just literally a bunch of old pictures of downtown Boise from like the, mm-hmm. like between like the 50s and the 70s. And it just says like downtown Boise, like 1950 to 70. That's mm-hmm. all it is. And then the captions, uh, like, that's so easy. Like you just, well, you could do the green belt. Yeah. You could do that. And then the, it's like, you know, for more Boise history stories, like this is what I talk about. Right. I talk about Boise history constantly. Yeah. I think, I think that would work really well. Okay. Okay. We have a lot of things on here. Mm-hmm. One of the things, one of the big mistakes that I see creators make is they try to tackle too many things at once. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm realizing actually that we haven't gotten into selling products yet. We're going to do, for the selling products... We're going to do inside the Creator Flywheels course. We're going to talk about the flywheels and all that in selling yeah. products. So that'll be just for the members of the course. Mm-hmm. We'll get into that in a second. But for this, what are the 
two or three things that you want to really work on like coming out of this conversation? Mm-hmm. Um, definitely having like a, um, like a strategy and a process for the ads, paid ads. Mm-hmm. That I would say like includes lead magnets. Yeah. Um, and the get, implementing this. Mm-hmm. Um, also, just because it's hot right now. And it works. It works. It yeah. works really well. And making sponsorships easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's Definitely that. Because, like, you. this doesn't, like, it's like growing your audience is great, but if you're not really making money off of it, then it's well, really need, impossible need money. to keep doing this. Yeah. That's yeah. part of the flywheel. Mm-hmm. Right. So, we're, we're basically saying if we were to map this out at a very high level, we're taking the revenue that we're mm-hmm. making from sponsorships and we're reinvesting that into ads Mm -hmm. and that uh gets makes the audience bigger Mm -hmm. which then gives us more to sell Mm -hmm. which gives us more revenue from sponsorships Mm -hmm. it's hard i don't want to like downplay any of this this is a big undertaking Mm -hmm. but it's not harder than getting to these numbers yeah you know and getting the content backlog and all of that yeah that you have so well Mm -hmm. probably one other thing that i would say I said choose three. I'm going to add a fourth. <laughs> it's probably downstream from that a little bit. Is just make sure that we do this, um, yeah. like this overlap between the podcast and social, mm-hmm. and and just think about okay, what's my system for doing that? How yeah. do I make sure? Yeah, you know something I've never really done with the podcast is like uh, some sort of reason for a listener to give me their email address. Mm-hmm. Like you know, like but these could be. Yeah, like, or it's even, and it's even like, you know, I have the content written, like, I'm going to tell you about these, like, five, like, one we just did is five iconic Boise foods, like, put your email in, and I'll send you, like, the list and the address and the photo of whatever I was just talking about. It's, like, so easy. Yeah. I already have it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> one other thing that I really encourage you to, but be careful not to do, mm-hmm. is to create too many lead magnets. Because that's where you can get caught up into like, oh, and then I could create this, and mm-hmm. then I could create that. And if you think about the effort versus impact, there can be a lot of effort into making these. Yeah. Um, when really you, you have, with a bit of effort, you can have enough. Mm-hmm. Like I would, no, I would not have more than five. Okay. Um, and then really think about, okay, what awareness content can I do to drive more? Mm-hmm. Okay, so the big things are we're going to research and learn a lot of what it takes to build a sales team mm-hmm. and learn about the compensation models. Focus on paid ads. Uh, really build out the comment and subscribe, like how that conversion works, because that's going to be part of the paid ads. Mm-hmm. Figure out what's worked in the past with Reels and how can we recreate that in a format that's designed for an ad for a subscription. Mm-hmm. And then keep coming back to a few calls to action, you know, both here and here, that will like increase that conversion. Mm-hmm. Does that sound good? Yeah, it sounds great. I mean, it sounds, <laughs> it's good to have a plan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, we've covered a lot. Let's, uh, let's sit down and process this. <laughs> There's a lot to work on in there. The, the next things that we want to do is, uh, for everyone inside the Creator of Flywheels course, we'll do a breakdown on a flywheel around digital products. Mm-hmm. And then otherwise, there's so much great stuff to dive into here. So Marissa, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. If you enjoyed this episode, go to the YouTube channel, just search Billion Dollar Creator and go ahead and subscribe. Make sure to like the video and uh, drop a comment. I'd love to hear what some of your favorite parts of the video were and also who else we should have on the show.